Today, we're diving deep into the intricate changes unfolding in the egghead during episodes 1077 and 1075, and the secrets lurking behind the shocking assassination attempt on Shaka. I gotta say, the chaos inside the egghead in the latest chapters is witnessing drastic shifts, especially when compared to episode 1075. You see, the attack on Shaka, that's a massive twist that has left the audience gaping. And rumors are flying that there are even more mysteries hidden behind the scenes. Not to mention the dynamic and patterns of our favorite characters inside the egghead might be hinting at a connection to the perpetrator. Now, if the details I'm about to unveil tickle your fancy, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you've got different theories or opinions, share your thoughts in the comment section. A heads up though, this video contains spoilers up to episode 1077, so proceed with caution. Let's get cracking. First things first, let's compare the events of episode 1077 with what happened in episode 1075 sequentially. Down in the Akad's lower layer, the Fabirio phase, we see Sentamaru briefing the staff on the impending development. Though he was knocked unconscious by Luchi, at one point, he managed to recover and has set the pacifista Mark III free, directing it towards the coast. Our guy, Sentamaru, aware of the Hera incident, feels something even more significant is in the works and is urging those who can evacuate to do so promptly. From Sentamaru's remarks, we can deduce that the Navy is conducting an operation that warrants elimination, considering all potential losses. Next, we move to the egghead upper layer, Labo phase, Building A, Floor 4, Control Room. In episode 1075, Shaka and Luffy joined Zoro, who was facing two Seraphim, and the narrative had progressed to the point where Luchi and Kaku woke up and proposed a collaboration. In episode 1077, the battle continues with S-Bear versus Luffy and Luchi and S-Hawk versus Zoro and Kaku. Zoro noticed that the Seraphims had the characteristics from the Lunari tribe and communicated their weakness to Luffy, Luchi, and Kaku. The Lunari tribe itself is said to be a race that has already perished, a very rare existence. Zoro, who has experience of fighting and winning against the surviving members of such a tribe, King, is a valuable man, playing a significant role in controlling the situation. Shaka realizes immediately upon hearing Zoro's story that it was about the experimental subject, Albel. Moreover, he suddenly intends to leave the scene during the battle. When Luffy asks him where he's going, he says he has one place in mind where Stella might be. He then left command room and headed somewhere. By the way, there was a scene where Zoro stops S-Hawk who tries to pursue Shaka at this time. In the East Blue Saga, we would say, don't interfere with Bucci and stop him. In Stampede, I recall the scene where he was saying, don't interfere with the captain to Crocodile and stopping him. Next, we move to Labo Phase, Building A, Floor 3. It's the team of Nami, Brooks, and Edison. As of episode 1075, these three were yet to engage in battle with the Seraphim. Nami found a synthetic diamond and was excited, and the three of them were having a cheerful exchange. From there, a scene is heard with Nami's scream, and as expected, in episode 1077, the battle with S-Shark has begun. Brooks has lost his head due to the attack, but it doesn't seem to be a problem ability-wise, and Edison has been partially destroyed. Edison was also a person who was suspected at one point in Satellite. However, given that he took a direct hit from S-Shark's attack and his damage, wouldn't it be okay to say that he can be ruled out as a suspect? Nami attacks S-Shark, but since the flame on the back hasn't disappeared, there's hardly any damage, and then Sanji comes to the rescue. Originally, Sanji was on the second floor of Building B with Stussy and Jinbei, but he rushed over when he sensed Nami was in danger. In the Punk Hazard arc, he appeared saying, I heard the sound of a woman's tears falling, and when Virgo showed up, and Tashigi was in a pinch. In Dressrosa, when Doflamingo tried to attack the Thousand Sunny, there was a scene where he defended Nami and the others saying, Don't lay a hand on my crew! It's quite thrilling to see the distinct personalities of characters like Zoro and Sanji shine through though, isn't it? By the way, an intriguing point about Sanji is that his eyebrow direction is the same as that of the Germa brothers. As explained in the SBS of Volume 105, the power of the science has manifested again. However, Sanji himself hasn't lost his emotions. I believe that the fervor he possesses, which is absent in Ichiji, Niji, and Yonji, further enhances the power of his techniques. Next, the Labo phase on the right side of Building B's second floor, 
with Jinbei and Stussy team. This was not depicted in chapter 1077. It seems to be quite significant. As of chapter 1075, Jinbei, Stussy, and Sanji were walking on the weapons development floor. Until the landing at Egghead, Stussy was an enemy as part of CP0. In fact, she is a clone of Miss Bakken, created by Vegapunk, and has been cooperating as an ally. At this point, you might wonder if Stussy is a double agent. However, the reason Sanji left Stussy's side is because he can't attack a woman if Stussy was an enemy. From there, you might interpret that it's to set a stage for a potential fight between Jinbei and Stussy. Even so, if that were to happen, I'm confident that Jinbei wouldn't let Stussy go out of sympathy. Among the Straw Hat crew, it's also hard to imagine the composed Jinbei being outwitted by Stussy. Next, at the Labo Phase, Building C, third floor, on the left. Usopp, Frankie, Lilith, York, Pythagoras, team. In Chapter 1075, Usopp, Frankie, Lilith, and York arrived at Pythagoras' place, which was attacked by S-Snake or someone else. Then York carelessly approaches Seraphim and gets turned into stone. The battle continues in Chapter 1077, with Lilith attacking with the bubble gun she had all along. According to Lilith, the bubbles contain an energy of the sea and are effective against green-blooded Seraphim, a fact that has been revealed. However, S-Snake, modeled after Hancock, tempts Frankie, Usopp, and Lilith with its charm. As a result, Frankie is turned into stone from the waist down, and both Lilith and Usopp are fully petrified. The only one left is Pythagoras, but he has already been attacked before the four convened and seems unable to contribute to the fight in his current state where only his head is functioning. This place is facing the most devastating damage right now. The team on the third floor of the Building C is nearly wiped out, and all we can do is fervently hope they won't be shattered while petrified. Next, the Labo Phase Building A, second floor with Robin, Chopper, and the Atlas team. They too were not featured this time, just like Jembe and Stussy's part. As of Chapter 1075, the three were acting together, viewing artificial organs and engaging in conversation. Actually, among the satellites, Atlas is the only one who hasn't been attacked by a Seraphim yet, leaving a lingering, uneasy feeling. Even though the teams have been split into smaller groups, it's dubious whether Robin and Chopper can act independently while together, avoiding scrutiny. Before we go to the Stella part, let's talk about the situation near Egghead. There aren't many significant enemies left in the Fabric phase, but heading towards Egghead are the naval forces and the government warships. Under Admiral Kazara's orders, as many warships as possible are heading to Egghead, anticipating an intense battle with Pacifista Mark III. It seems a long-planned strategy of the Navy is about to be put into action. Furthermore, one of the five Elder Stars, Jagarshia, Saturn Saint, is also heading towards Egghead. Thus, from the government side, big shots like five Elder Stars and the Navy Admiral are assembled. The number of warships exceeds 100, more than 10 times that of Buster Call. Therefore, Sentamaru is struggling to evacuate the staff, but even that is becoming difficult. Well, without further ado, let's pursue the scene with Vegapunk Stella. In Chapter 1076, it was revealed that Stella was confined in a certain place within Egghead and had returned to her original form at that time. By the way, Bonnie is still supposed to be in room NICU where Kuma's memories are stored, and it was revealed that the Vegapunk Stella is in the basement of Labo Phase in the old Devil Fruit research room. Vegapunk Stella, Shaka, and the CP agents are here. Shaka, who said he had a clue, left Luffy and the others arrived and found Stella. Upon trying to help, Shaka is asked by Stella, who did you come with? Right after, Shaka is shot in the head by someone. The striking scene here was a splatter of blood-like substance from Shaka's head when hit. If satellite is created based on humans, like Pacifista, it wouldn't be strange for them to bleed. However, there were those with bodies that seemed to be completely mechanical, like Edison and Pythagoras. Also, there were those like Atlas who, despite being attacked, get damaged in an explosion instead of bleeding. In the same satellite, there are individual differences, which makes us wonder what kind of face is behind Shaka's mask, and if there was someone who became a model for it. Another person whose movements are unknown is Caribou, who should be hiding somewhere. Forced off the sunny and wandering around, it's hard to believe that Caribou is behind all these crimes. 
So far, this is the latest situation for each scene. And now let's look at the clues regarding the main culprit in this episode. First, in narrowing down the suspects, I would like to reduce the number of infinites that we consider as potential actions of the perpetrator. It is believed that this series of incidents has already started a few months ago. The confinement of CP, the leakage of information to the government, the loss of control of the Frontier Dome, and the abduction of Vegapunk Stella. Orders to Seraphim, destruction of the monitors including Kamiko, and the sniping of Shaka. If all these are the deeds of the same person, considering them all together would just go in circles and there'd be no end to it. Therefore, at this time, I want to focus mainly on the abduction of Stella and the sniping of Shaka. I would like to narrow down to the individuals who potentially could have carried out these two acts. Let's first take a closer look at the Stella abduction case. Let's focus on the part where we consider if there was anyone who could have possibly carried this out. Let's name the people who were definitely in the Labo phase when the three CP0 members were still in the lower Fabilio phase. They are Vegapunk, Stella. In the satellite, we have Lilith, Pythagoras, Edison, York, and Shaka. They were all depicted lined up, weren't they? And Stella was cooperating, as shown in the communications with someone saying, of course I was waiting for the order. Then, the Straw Hat crew who said, please let us on the ship, were Nami, Usopp, Sanji, Robin, and Frankie. Afterwards, inside the lab, Luffy and Chopper are chasing Bonnie. At this time, the damaged Atlas, who was attacked by Luchi on the lower level, is not depicted. It seems that it might be under repair somewhere, carried by Jinbei, who is also not depicted. Then, the Frontier Dome is deactivated and Luchi and the others come up. At this point, where Kaku unleashes Stormleg, Zoro rises from the Sunny and retaliates. Brook is not depicted either, but he should have been near the Sunny and since he is a member of the Straw Hat crew, he's excluded from the suspects. When Luffy and Chopper arrive at the control room, Bonnie and Stella start a chase again. Continuing with episode 1072. At this point, Bonnie and Vegapunk are still together, with Vegapunk being turned into a child and having a conversation with Bonnie in the bear's memory room. Shaka continues to watch the monitors in the control room while Edison and Lilith head outside to stop the Seraphim. The undepicted satellites are Pythagoras, Atlas, and York. Following to episode 1073. At the point where Stussy puts Luchi and Kaku to sleep, Shaka is still watching the monitors with the crew. At this time, Jinbai is also shown. Edison and Lilith are still running towards the outside, and when they burst out, Zoro and Sanji support them, and the Seraphim temporarily stops its actions. Incidentally, near the place where Shaka and the Straw Hat crew are thought to be, Pythagoras is also depicted to be with York. Once again, the only one not depicted is Atlas. At this time, as Luffy and Chopper are searching for Bonnie and Stella, the disappearance of Vegapunk Stella is narrated. Between the gathering at the Labo phase and the narration of Stella's disappearance, places where someone is together are depicted. Or, if we were to exclude individuals who are depicted being somewhere, even alone from the list of suspects, it would mean that the only one left is Atlas. I am merely stating from what we can confirm as facts at the moment. I am not including any personal opinions on whether or not I believe they are the culprit. Next, we narrow down to another internal aspect of the crime, the targeting of Shaka. When we look into this, coinciding with the timing of the report of Stella's disappearance in chapter 1073, Atlas reappears as if on cue in chapter 1074. Stussy, Zoro, and Brooks have changed their costumes. But then we have Shaka, Usopp, Chopper, Jinbei, Brook, Luffy, Zoro, Edison, Sanji, York, Nami, and Robin. Moreover, Luchi, Kaku, Frankie, and Atlas were depicted in the scene where they were gathered together. However, Lilith and Pythagoras are missing, and they seem to be walking around the laboratory alone looking for Stella. Pythagoras, who was on the third floor of Building C, contacted Shaka once. From here, they each split into teams and started acting, and Pythagoras was attacked from behind by someone. Chapter 1075. A figure appears on the monitor that Shaka was watching. Someone goes around destroying cameras, and the footage becomes unviewable. The team situation from there is as we have reviewed so far, and in Chapter 1077, the ones not depicted are Satellite, Atlas, and York. 
and since York has been turned to stone, we can essentially say it was only Atlas. Stussy is also not depicted, but let's consider this along with the kidnapping of Stella. Doing so, it seems the only person left with the possibility of committing the two crimes in succession is Atlas. I repeat, this is speculation based on objective facts. I do not want to believe that Atlas is a culprit too. After splitting into teams, Robin and Chopper are by his side, so he shouldn't be able to do as he pleases easily. But compared to knowing what the other people are doing, not being depicted implies a higher probability of suspicious activity occurring. For example, for Shaka, who was watching the footage on the monitor room the whole time with the Straw Hat crew by his side, it should be impossible to kidnap Stella. It simply cannot be physically done. If that is the case, currently, Atlas is the one who has the highest probability and deepest suspicion of committing the crime. But there are still many uncertain elements. Right now, we are focusing on the kidnapping of Stella and the targeting of Shaka, but in reality, there are many more crimes taking place. Whether all the crimes were committed by Atlas alone is something that could possibly be refuted, saying no, this isn't right. Also, in the remarks of Atlas in chapter 1075, you can change your face and appearance as you like. That's what the future is like. This seems to imply the pattern that someone might be impersonating satellite. The Atlas who was defeated by Lucci and brought to Labophase for repairs was the real one, but maybe someone replaced him there. The other satellite might have been replaced from the beginning and the inside might be someone completely different. If we delve deeper, Shaka has had time to be alone from the time he left the command room until he went underground. Also, Lilith and York might have deliberately turned themselves to stone. In fact, it might be possible to only release themselves while the Straw Hat crew and others were turned to stone. Or perhaps Pythagoras, the only one not turned to stone, had a hand in it. Maybe Stussy somehow outsmarted Jinbei, put him to sleep and started acting alone. Has Jay Garcia's Saturn Say already entered the island by some power? If you want to expand, you can expand the range of suspects, but as much as possible from the depicted scenes realistically, if you think it has a higher probability, the number gets narrowed down, doesn't it? Next, I do consider footsteps to be one factor that can serve as a reference, but thinking from that standpoint, I presume a significant number of people would become potential suspects. Concerning the route to the basement, it's the same case, isn't it? If Shaka was being trailed while heading underground, even those who are not aware of the location initially could manage to reach there. But the culprit has confined Stella and CP there even before Shaka got to know about it. This means that the person was already acquainted with the place, not just waiting for Shaka and Satellite to arrive there, doesn't it? In that case, the scope narrows down to individuals who are particularly well-versed with Egghead, making it more specific. Given that it's referred to as the old Devil Fruit Research Room, it seems to be a room not much in use nowadays. Thus, Caribou, who just arrived, would be the first to be eliminated from the suspect list. Moreover, it seems unlikely for the Blackbeard Pirates, who were speculated to have come from outside to commit the crime, doesn't it? Ever since the initiation of Seraphim, the methods have become more flamboyant, haven't they? In terms of being able to carry out a planned crime, the likelihood of someone close to Satellite seems higher. And when it turns into a scenario where someone is impersonating Satellite, a new character comes into play. We cannot entirely discard the possibility that it is someone entirely new who hasn't appeared until now. So this time we have conducted a terrifying death game scene investigation. How was it everyone? That's all for today. This channel posts summaries, explanations, and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you next video.